Welcome back to another chilled Procreate tutorial. In today's video, we're going to create this quirky skateboarding cat. I'll show you subtle ways to add texture to your flat illustrations, as well as how to easily create different colorways. So grab yourself a cozy drink and let's get started. So first we're going to create a canvas. So I'll just go over to the X here and I'm going to create a canvas of 4,000 by 5,000 pixels with a DPI of 300. And this just usually gives me around 29 layers to work with. And if this number is a little bit different, that might be because you have a different iPad. So just bear that in mind. And I usually create a canvas quite large just in case a client wants to license out a design in the future. So I'm just gonna create. So I have my canvas now and I'll go over to my color palette. So I have my cat palette here that I'm gonna be working with today. If you want to follow along, I've just put up the color palettes with the hex codes on the screen. So just feel free to pause the video and write these down. And I'm gonna start with the blue for the background. So I'll go over to my layers. I'll go to background color, select that blue and click done. And this is gonna set my background color. I've now created another layer on top of that background and I'm going to go in with my cream to create my cat shape. So I'm going to be using brushes from my Portrait Essentials and this is part of my Portrait Power Pack. I'm going to be using the Charlie outline to outline all of my design but you can also follow along with the monoline brush that already comes with Procreate. And as you can see here, I have my brush settings saved a few different ones. So I wanna make sure that my brush is relatively small for creating my shape. And I'm gonna go in now with the ears first. I'll create one ear here, like this triangle, and then I'll create another line going across and another triangle like this. And then I'm gonna bring out the head just a little bit and then bring the body down like this and then arch the back round like that. And I want it to end around the same as that side. I'll then rotate my canvas. I'm gonna draw a straight line, probably about here, just to bring that shape down. And I'm gonna tap on my screen like this to bring that line straight. And then I'm just going to match that on both sides like so. And once I have my shape created, I'm just going to drag that cream onto that shape. So notice here how I have my color threshold. So if I bring that too high, that's gonna flood my whole canvas and I don't want that. So I normally set it to around 97% and then I can just neaten up any areas where the line looks a bit jagged. And I rotate my canvas for this just to get a little bit of control over my line work. And then I can just erase any parts of my illustration that is looking a little bit wonky. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is add the tail. So I'm gonna go back over to my Charlie outline. If you notice, I'm kind of rotating the canvas as I go, just so I can get those fluid lines. If you wanna learn how to improve your line work, be sure to watch this video that I've linked up there as well. I'll then create the tail. So I have my cat shape now. I'm gonna create a new layer on top and I'm gonna go in with a pink for the skateboard. So I'll add this pink stick with the Charlie outline, but I'm gonna add a larger brush stroke now. So I have this setting here, and I'm gonna go in with a line that's a little bit wider than my cat. And again, I'm just going to tap on that screen to create that line. And I can move it down. So it's really important that you're always creating your illustration on separate layers for this. I'll create a new layer and go in with a black and I'll go in with my Charlie Inca this time. So I like to mix and match my illustrations. Sometimes I use brushes that have a lot of texture and other times I don't, just to add a little bit of variety to my illustrations. So I'm gonna have the wheels kind of imperfect, maybe to make them look like they're moving. So I have them slightly at an angle and I have another one here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about having fun. I'm gonna create a new layer, go in with my cream 
and just add that to the middle of my wheels like that. Okay, so to make it look even more like a skateboard, I want to add a little bit of shadow to this illustration. So I'm going to go in with a blue, go over to disc and add a darker shade of that blue. I'll go in underneath all of those layers. So I've created a new layer and place it underneath. I'll go in with my smooth sketcher and I'm just going to add a line for the shadow. And this is just gonna be a little bit shorter than the skateboard. And then I'm just going to click on the end and bring down the opacity just to make it a little less intense. And really quickly, that's just showing that the cat is on top of a skateboard. And that's just a really nice touch to add a bit of realism to your quirky illustration. So I'm gonna go in now with a new layer again and go over to my Charlie Inca and I'm going to draw the cat's eyes and features. So I'll have the eyes kind of slanted down like this. I am going to be adding some sunglasses later on but I do like to add the eyes just in case that I want to have this illustration with and without sunglasses. Looking a little bit sullen or grumpy. I'll add a pink and I'm just going to create a new layer on top and add that little button nose for my cat. So kind of like an upside down triangle. And once the face is done, I am going to start to add a little bit of texture to the cat's body. So to do this, I'm going to select the layer with the cat. I'm going to toggle on select and now you'll see these little diagonal lines and this is going to show that everything within that layer is now selected. So we're going to go over to the layer and create a new one on top and toggle off that layer. So as you can see this is still selected so everything I draw within this layer is now just going to be confined to that shape that we selected and this is where we can start to bring in some textures. So I'm going to go over to that cream and select a brush with some texture. So I'm going to go in with this grunge texture and I've got it set to quite high and I'm just going to lightly draw within this shape and I can keep layering up as I go to kind of make that texture a little more opaque and I'm just kind of adding some of those textures but I want to keep a little bit of that blue coming through and this is a really great way to add some texture within that shape. So I'm just going to click on the arrow here to deselect that. And now, as you can see, I have some really nice textures coming through on that shape. So I'm gonna create a new layer again, and I'm gonna toggle on clipping mask now, because I want to draw those cute flowers within this shape. I'm gonna go over to my accessories, and this is also something that comes with my portrait power pack, and select the daisy brush so this stamp I'm just going to make that stamp a little bit bigger go over to let's say a yellow for now and I'm just going to tap within my cat to create this really quirky pattern so once I've done that I want to change up some of the colors as well I'll go in with some of those colors from my color palette Maybe I'll drag and drop to create an orange here and maybe here. I could also add an orange there. So I'm just kind of mixing it up so you can have fun with this. I'm gonna add maybe a green here and there. And I could add a pink here. Okay, so now that I have all my different colors, I'm gonna create a new layer and bring that underneath this layer and that will automatically add as a clipping mask where you see that little arrow. I'm going to go back over to my portrait essentials and my Charlie outline, select a blue this time and I want to create some stalks for my flowers. So just test that out, maybe I'll go in with this. So I'll just draw a line like this for my stalks. 
I quite like how this matches the background colour as well. And then I'll go and create a new layer above my flowers, select clipping mask again and I'm just going to go in with let's say a blue for now and then I can change up those colours. I'll go back to my accessories and this time select simple stud. You can also manually create your circles here if you don't have this brush pack and I'm just going to make sure that the size I'm just going to add a circle for the middle and then like we did before we can change up the colours depending on the colour of the flower. So I feel like a pink would look really nice here so I'm just going to drag that over. Actually a pink could look really nice with the green as well. And if any of your circles aren't completely centered, you can go over to the select and just move that down slightly like so. Okay, so I have my cute flower pattern within my shape. And now we're going to create a new layer on top and create the sunglasses. So I'm gonna go in with an orange. I'll go over to my portrait essentials. So this is why it's really important to have all of your brushes in one place, just so it speeds up your workflow. So I'm gonna use the Charlie outline again for the circles. I'm gonna create one circle like this, hold my pencil down and my finger to snap that. And then I'll duplicate that layer and bring that over to the other side. I'll merge these two down when I'm happy with them with two fingers, just pinch. And then I'm gonna create a new layer on top. I'll go in with a black. And this is where I'm gonna start bringing a little bit of texture again. So I'm gonna go in with my gritty details and create a circle for the inside of the sunglasses. So as you can see, I've got this really nice kind of texture. So notice how I just need to bring that threshold down a little bit. And over with my select, I can just kind of try and push that into the middle. And then I'm going to duplicate that again, bring that over to the other side. And then finish that off by pinching with two fingers just to save layers, create a new layer. Go over to my Charlie outline and just finish that off with that detail there. Okay, so we're nearly finished now. So the only thing we need to do now is start adding a little bit more texture and detail. So I wanna go in with a hat as well, just to add to this really quirky skateboarding cat. So I'm gonna go in with my Charlie outline and bring that over like this. So create a kind of semi-circle for the hat. And we want to start it with it being kind of resting on that ear here. But we're gonna have it kind of coming out a little bit just to show that the hat's to the side. Just add a little bit more 3D. And then I'll just add a black, create a new layer, go in with my texture details and just finish that off with the cap coming up like that. And also we're gonna create a new layer and we want to add that circle now for the sun. So I'm gonna bring this layer below all of my other layers. I'm going to select that yellow, go back to my Charlie outline and I'm just going to draw a circle hold that down and just bring it to around there and then fill that in like so. And what I normally do as well with all of my illustrations is add a really nice texture. So I'll go down to my scratchy strands and you can use any texture brush for this. I'm just gonna add a few lines for the hairs. I'll create a new layer go over to my cream again and now I'm just going to add a few little sparkles around it to finish it off. So I'll go over to my accessories and pick this chunky star. Maybe I could have one here and one there. Add a new layer. 
go in with my simple stud and I'm just going to bring that down and just tap for some cute little stars around my cap like so. All right, so the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of texture to the background. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to bring that layer all the way to the bottom. I'm going to select my brush from my Portraits Essentials and the Retro Grain is something that I use for a lot of that retro feel for my illustrations. I'll go over with a blue and I'm just going to add a darker tone to that. And I'm just going to I'll just zoom in so you can see, lightly add a nice texture to that background. And I feel this just really helps finish off your illustrations. So this texture is quite intense right now. So what I always do is go over to the end and I just bring the opacity down just to minimize that intensity. So around 30% for here, but you can play around with this. And just like that, I was able to create a really quirky skateboarding textured cap. So before we go, I just wanted to share a little bonus tip for you if you want to change the colors quickly. So we'll go over to gallery, share and share that as a JPEG, save image, and we'll go back to gallery, click on photo and bring in your cat illustration. And this will then have it on a separate layer, but you've also saved your layered file just in case you want to go in and change it. We're going to duplicate that layer and keep this in case we want to edit it later. And we're now going to have a little bit of fun with color. So we'll go over to the adjustments here and go down to gradient map. And as you can see, you have lots of different gradients here where you can have fun and play around with different colors and moods for your illustrations. So I like to just go in and kind of play around with them. So these aren't set in stone. So this kind of noir or blaze could be a really fun one. So I'm going to select blaze. And as you can see, you have these little sliders that you can kind of play around with and get loads of different color combinations. So I quite like having this around here and this for a less intense background, or maybe I can add a little bit of pink here. So I quite like having this purple and I can change up the light colors as well. You can also add a new color here, which is really fun. So you can just hold or double tap and this is then where you can actually bring in some more colors to add to these gradient maps. And maybe this could be quite a fun one. So I could go and add a little bit of purple here. And then again, just play around with that. And I could just push that orange a little bit brighter. And this is just a really fun way for you to get lots of different color combinations for your illustrations. And there you have it, a really quick way to change colors and create an illustration in Procreate. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials from me every week. I can't wait to see your cute cats. See you in the next video. Bye.